Yeah, there's going to be a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. Oh, there's always too many things. Really, se end of September hits, and it feels like it's just like straight on through to New Year's. Yeah. Every year. That's how I always feel. It's a grind. You know what it is? Is that I always feel in every situation I'm in some sort of a rush. Because then the New Year will be here, and like, because of the work that I do, um, we're in a, you know, in college admissions really the new year is going to hit and we're going to have a ton of stuff to do and then it'll be may and all of the admissions decisions come in everybody's told us whether or not they're coming and then it's going to be the summer and the whole summer is always like ah we got to make sure that all these kids are set up so they can enter the school in a few months then by the time that ends it's like oh it's almost getting to be halloween it's just a lot and i've been doing it for like 13 years. Oh, I need a new gig. Yeah, it always <sighs> feels like I'm in a rush. Yeah. I'm weirdly excited for Thanksgiving just because for me that means things are slowing down a little bit and I uh, can hopefully get a little bit of rest. I'm still recovering from daylight savings because small children still get up at their normal time, which is an hour earlier. And, yeah, they uh, have no idea. You have no idea that time has changed. I had quite an argument with my child. Yeah. An argument. One. She won. Yeah, there's no arguing. She, she, she woke me up at 4.30 that, that morning, and Same. I had forgotten the time had changed. So I was like, okay, fine, let's get up. It's a little early. And then I looked at the clock and realized it was 4.30 and not 5.30. And I was just like, okay, I already told you you can get up so you can start watching TV now. And I'm going to go back to sleep on the couch. Yeah, I got woken up at 4.45 that day. And I was just like, you've got to be kidding me. What hell? What hell we put ourselves through? Yeah, I, um, I need Congress to finish passing that bill. It already cleared Senate. All we have to do is have the House vote on it, and we are out of daylight savings, you know, after this next one in the spring, it's over, but they just need to finish it. Yeah, time time to stop the t time changes. Yeah. We don't need them. They kill a lot of people. This, a lot of people, it's very stressful. Yeah. People have heart attacks, people get into Strokes. car accidents. Yeah, People are always just like, but if it's dark, it, people might get hit by cars. And I'm like, you know what's happening now? People are already dying. <laughs> Let's all not be all tired. <laughs> time is a thing we made up to be more convenient. Because to the time... point, time is something we made up to the point where we can just twice a year adjust it. <laughs> right. It's not real. It's we, we do this to ourselves. <laughs> I think we've gotten way off topic. We, or we never even digressed. got we never even we digressed before even getting to a topic. Yeah, I can't I even I tired. can't even put this into Dad's digress. This is the opening. Welcome to the show. If this is your first episode, I'm sorry. I'm more excited for the Disney Plus Willow series than I am about the Amazon Lord of the Rings series that just came out. I haven't even watched the Lord of the Rings series that just came out, and it's over, and I have Prime. And I'm a ma I am grew up a massive Tolkien fan. Mm. Um, and I'm just, I'm, I'm more excited about Willow. Yeah, I saw. I I got into Lord of the Rings when the movies were. Out. You, I was into Lord of the Rings when I was a little kid because my father would tell me the Lord of the Rings stories. Like he would retell them to me and my sister as a bedtime story. Same. I which, grew up when with I was the a Hobbit kid, as a bedtime story. Right, and as a kid, I did. He was kind of like making it up for. He was playing like he was making it up for us. We when we found out that the Hobbit was a story that somebody else had written and was not my father's i was like it like broke it blew my mind i was like broken <laughs> and i loved those as a kid and i loved i went and saw all of the lord of the rings movies with my dad in theaters when they came out um uh up through the first hobbit movie i think we both walked out of the first hobbit movie we're like oh, it wasn't oh very they good. were so bad the hobbit movies <laughs> yeah um did you ever see like the lord animated of the Rings. Lord of the Rings movies? 
I've seen parts of it. That's actually how we found my dad out. Um, Cause we went to the video store to go rent something and they were like, Oh, Hey, you have um, the Lord of the Rings is overdue. You need to return it. And me and my sister were like, what? <laughs> and my mom then told us, I was like, Oh yeah, dad, dad wasn't really making that up. He was, he had rented the movie to refresh himself and then was making it up along with us. Again, still one of my very favorite memory, like one of my favorite childhood memories. Yeah. <laughs> Because <laughs> acting out Lord of the Rings with my dad, it was fantastic. There was the animated Lord of the Rings movie, which was in yeah, its the own... Bakshi. The... Yeah, which was Bakshi cool. did those. And uh, but then there was also an animated Hobbit and an animated Return of the King movie that were done in a completely different style. Hmm. Um. And all of those movies, to a degree, are you know kind of gloomy and spooky. Um, yeah, definitely the Lord of the Rings one, because they did a cool art thing in that where they actually had a lot of live action stuff that they drew over. So all the Nazgul and stuff riding on the horses have this weird ethereal thing as they're like riding towards you. Um, and it's because it's actually film footage of people dressed as Nazgul riding towards you and they just animated over them. So it's a layered. Oh, yeah. The, um. The rotoscope, the same sort of thing you see in, like, yeah. heavy metal or um, fire and ice, if you ever see yes. fire and ice. Yeah, they did the rotoscope type of stuff. So, um, I remember that as to, a like, kid, like, in, and listen to metal music too. invoked stuff to me. I was like, oh, that's kind of actually, like, they did a good job making the Nazgul scary. So, but let's get back to Willow. We can do those Willow. movies when we get to the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> Well, those movies, I don't think they're, like, they're not particularly kid-friendly, where Willow is very much... The animated uh, cartoons? The I think audience. The, I grew up watching those cartoons. They're musicals. I would need, need to watch them. I'd have to watch them again. I remember them being a little bit, a little bit much, but... They're on know, my Plex, but as a little kid, I loved them. So, but I was a weird little kid, so... Sure. All right. Aren't we all... Not to non sequitur again, but I'm gonna. I actually just downloaded a documentary. I'll, I, I'll have to find the name. Um, but it's basically just about that era of the 80s where it was like all the media that was created just to push like Hasbro toys. Oh my, yeah. And I it, mean, there's not much of it. Yeah, it looks like a really fun uh, documentary just on like how much stuff just exists because they wanted to sell more toys. So I did not realize that the big He-Man scary general had worked with Lucas before this twice. He was he in Raiders of the Lost Ark. He is the Nazi that is boxing Indiana Jones while the plane is spinning around. <laughs> And right. he and meets a gruesome end there. And he's also in Temple of Doom. He is the guard that Indiana Jones is fighting on the conveyor belt that he puts through the stone grinder. Probably more of a stunt actor. Yeah, but like he's just the guy that like gets killed by the hero in the big climactic fight in every George Lucas film in the eighties, apparently. <laughs> Hey, do worse. Um, yeah, we need more stuff like that. Yeah. I would like to see more stuff like that. I mean, but at the same time, hearing him saying that, oh, I didn't watch the Dark Crystal TV show, but I'm also saying that I want more stuff like that, which is ridiculous because Dark Crystal was absolutely one of my favorite favorites as a kid. One of the things, and someone's going to call me out on this, is, that I think might be an issue is that... Uh, the Jim Henson workshop got bought by Disney, and Disney's not really doing anything with the Muppets. And they keep trying, but it never seems to stick. Well, they're specifically doing trying like with the Muppets. You know what I mean? And I'm like, don't try it with the Muppets. 
like do something else with like a labyrinth type of thing or a never ending story type of a thing or a dark crystal type of a thing where you're using the creature workshop, but it's not a Muppets franchise. Hmm. Oh, okay. So putting on something using the architecture of the Muppets, like the, the creature creation of the Muppets, but not something that is actually Muppets. Yes. Because, yeah, the they did a lot of work on all these movies. Hell, they did work on Star Wars. So they were one of the big names in these worlds back then. So, you know, utilize them that way. You don't have to figure out how to make the Muppets relevant for kids these days. Just let the Creature Workshop do what it's always been really good at. Yeah. Because I think the last, like, Muppet thing that even came out was 2021. So it's been about a year since they put out anything. That was the Muppets Haunted Mansion. Yeah. If they ever come out with anything else. Because I know that, I don't know, maybe there just hasn't been that much of a return on investment in the Muppets. Well, they haven't even put a lot of the stuff on Disney+. Plus. Like, Fraggle Rock's not on Disney+. Plus. The Muppets is not Disney+. Plus. Yeah, I think it's a lot of um, rights issues. Oh, I think... Well, they have been... They own it. They bought it all. Well, yeah, they own the Muppets as a property, but a lot of those old productions, I think because they were done along with other companies... They're probably there's probably rights issues, especially a lot of the old TV shows. They wouldn't have licensed the music, with the intention of it streaming, forty years later. Yeah, that's one of the things that holds up a lot of old TV shows from going on to to streaming is because the music, um, uh, the rights for the music is really confusing. Yeah. Or hard to navigate. Oh, you know what? Now I'm looking on Wikipedia. It looks like um, there's going to be a new Muppet television series coming out on Disney Plus. So they are using them. Oh, yeah. It's going to be about Dr. Teeth, I think. All right. Huh. 